Welcome back to the second interview for the Scout. My name is Dave, and today we have uh, somebody that is um, related to an article I did when I went to Burlington to see the Lake Monsters, the, the Vermont Lake Monsters, and this is Tyler Febrero. How are you, man? I'm good. Thank you for having me on. It's, it's, it's my pleasure. Uh, gonna be, it's going to be some fun. Yeah, sure. And by the way, do, do I say your name right, Febrero? Yeah, that's perfect. Okay, perfect. Uh, uh, me and Tyler have something in common, if we can say it that way. We are both Quebecers. He's from Montreal, from Mont Royal. We, oui, yeah. Okay, and I'm from uh, Quebec City, obviously. I have kind of an accent, you know what I mean? Uh, Tyler, uh, I first came upon your name um, when I read a, an article in the Boston Globe on July 7th or 8th, uh, just before I went to see the Digging for Pete Um I'll say night at the um, at the ballpark. Um, I want to get into it right now because that's how I came about your name and uh, you were prominent in, in the in the article. Um, okay, so can, can you we just make a, a topo of, of of what's what's it's all about? So Pete Wilk is the manager for the lake uh, for the Vermont Lake Monsters, and he has brain cancer. So just before the 2023 uh, season, um, he learned that he had cancer. Uh, do you know what are the chances that we, he will survive this cancer? Um, it, it's from the research that I've done and what we've kind of been told, it's kind of probably one of the worst brain cancers you can you can probably get. It's uh, one that's uh, up there, like I said, with one of the most severe type of brain cancers that you can get. Um, I don't think it's surgically removable. I think what you can do is just type of maintain it type thing and, and try to reduce it to a point where you kind of just keep fighting it, but you know, your body gets used to it type of thing. So I know that he's doing a bunch of, you know, chemo and, and radiation and, and all that kind of stuff to, you know, keep minimizing his, his, uh, his tumor in his brain that uh, hopefully he can get back to his old ways. You, you know, he'll never be the same or he'll never be what he was, but, you know, I think we'll all understand, you know, the difference uh, that this uh, brain tumor is impactful on him. So mm -hmm. um, it's pretty severe. Um, it's definitely severe. But uh, I think he's, like I said, working hard to get it to minimize a little bit and, and uh, keep living life. I always say that you don't judge someone when it it's going good. You just you judge someone when it's going bad. I'd like to know. Um, how do you perceive him right now? Is his energy, and I'm I'm not saying his body energy. Obviously, that the physical thing will be uh, maybe more uh, difficult. But how is it going uh, mentally, and how is how are you responding to that energy? I think uh, he he really shows it. He tries to not show it to us. Really, he really tries to. I think obviously he deals with a lot of stuff, you know, at home and, and off the field. Uh, you know, going through all his his medication and and his you know his appointments that he has to done, but when he shows up to the field, he really tries to put that to the side as much as he can and really focus on us and on the players. And um, you know, when you see him out there, it, you you kind of get an extra motivation because you know what he's going through, and um, it really motivates you to you know understand that there's sometimes there's bigger things in life than than you know, the game of baseball. So it's, it's, um, you know, it's, it's really, it's really nice that you can, you can kind of have that right next to you in your dugout, in your bench that really give you an extra push when, like you said, when things are going tough, that you really understand that going over four in a day is really not that bad when you have, you know, brain cancer like he does. I got goosebumps, man. I would much prefer not to have them at all and not to be talking to you because of, of that situation. But I got goosebumps, man, and uh, not only goosebumps. I, I got also got the the bracelet. The, the yeah. How do you call that in English? The rubber bracelet. Yeah, just we call it bracelet. Really, I think it's okay. just uh, a bracelet for him, and and you know it's it shows that a lot of people around around town here have it, and on the team and and the organization, and it really shows how much we support him and and his family. And so, uh, we're gonna try to do anything we can to show our support for him and. Uh, and his family. 
it, it, to be quite honest with you, I had no idea that day that it was going to be the the um, the dig in for Pete. So I'm not going to try and say I went from Quebec to Burlington just to, just for him. I had no idea, man. I had no idea. So to be there and and something happened two weeks prior to that event in my life where I lost a friend. I, I lost a dear friend. So it was very emotional for, for me. And right to my right, there was this girl, uh, well, this woman, sorry, who had just lost her husband to cancer. And she was so moved by by the way that the community was reacting to it. It's insane. So you mentioned that that you see the support too. Have you have you ever been around or lost somebody to cancer? Uh, I haven't lost somebody to cancer. I know my my dad had uh cancer, but it wasn't very serious. It was uh, I think a throat cancer, but something that we caught early and and just you know surgically removed it type deal, and it wasn't too serious. But uh, there's definitely people that I know of, uh, maybe not super close to that you know have been affected by cancer and so you know you know cancer it, it's not fun it's not something that you want to hear about or, or really talk about unfortunately but you know it's it's life and it happens so um all you can do is support the people that have gone through it or know people who've gone through it and you know just be there for when they need you my it's my last question about it uh when i was there your uh you 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 won the game uh late in the game and so you you came back do, do you remember that game w was it special for you and I, I i don't want to put words into your mouth obviously but was it special for you and the team um it was very special i think uh i mean i don't know exactly uh the play-by-play -play about the game but i just know that uh at the end of the day, us as a group, as a team, really wanted to win that game, whatever it took kind of uh, to win that game. Um, we just wanted to win it for Pete on a special night for him to, to somewhat honor him. And so uh, I know at the end of the day, the goal was just to win the game, whatever it took. And that's what I will remember uh, for the rest of my life, that on a special night to honor him, uh, we got the job done and won the game. Nicely, nicely said, sir. Uh, if people want to help, I, I'm, I'm putting you on the spot right now. Uh, I sent some money. I, I think this is a GoFundMe or something like that. So people can still uh, buy those bracelets. They can still, I think there are shirts too. Uh, they can still send money and the money goes to, um, to, to Pete and his family and people in Canada, man, the, in the U.S., I love the U.S. I have nothing against you, man. Well, well, you're Canadian, obviously, <laughs> but, but the people in the U.S. But the healthcare over there is quite different from what we have in Canada. And you know what I mean? Here, it's all free, man. So we can do whatever you, we want. And we have great care and it's free. Over there, they need money and they need it bad. So if you have $5, $10, $20 to spare, Jesus fucking Christ, go ahead and just give it. Even if it's $5, I, I think I gave 20 bucks, but man, that helps. Anyway, uh, Tyler, you're, uh, as I said, you're from Quebec. You you played in the LBG, uh, oh my God, <laughs> LBG EQ. Oh my God, that, that sounds like the, uh, like the yeah. achievement. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, and what was your experience over there? Did you win with LaSalle? Did you win? Um, so, I don't think I ever won a championship with them. I think I played a couple playoff rounds with them. Uh, maybe I think I played two years with like not two, just two playoff rounds because during that time I was with uh, ABC during the summer and then ABC finished and then I went to play with them for a little bit. Uh, I don't think we ever won the championship. I think we won maybe one time we won a round or two. Um, but uh, you no, know, it was it was fun. You know, it was uh, a good group of guys, and and uh, I had a blast when I was playing for them. Nice. Uh, for the for the people who don't know, uh, mainly in the U.S., what is the ABC? This is quite a great academy. Yeah, it's the Academy Baseball of Canada. It's a very uh, prestige program. Um, it's a program who, uh, once you're involved in it and part of it, um, it really uh sets you up for for your future type deal. I've always said that um the visibility and the exposure that you get from being part of the ABC is, is extraordinary. All the tournaments that they do in the summer and, and the training in the fall and the winter to prepare you for the summer is, is amazing. Uh, all the coaches uh, do a great job. They're very experienced. They're very knowledgeable. And, and the lessons that you teach you, they're not just about baseball, but in life is, is amazing. So they really 
set you up for your baseball future and also uh, your future and, and living living life. Again, well said, man. Uh, again, we're from Canada. Aki is our uh, is our religion. For some reason, I was a huge fan before, but but baseball is my passion. I mean, I I do everything about I do everything in the, in the world of baseball except play it, which is kind of weird. But uh, what was your path uh, in baseball? Why not hockey? Why not another sport? Uh, I always, when I was younger, I always played both. I always played uh, hockey in the winter and, and summer and baseball in the summer. Uh, I think it's very important to, you know, play different sports throughout your childhood and, and be able to work different muscles and learn different things. Um, I think I stopped playing hockey around, uh, I would say, 16, 17, and then I really focused on baseball. That's when I started uh So my childhood, I kind of played um, with the Saint Laurent baseball, uh, not too far from where I'm from, uh, and then I played obviously with the Lac Saint Louis Tigers and and Double A baseball, and then I proceeded to take a few years and play with the Montreal Titans with the Ian Jordan program. Uh, I played with them for a couple of years, and then I uh played a year of Midget Triple A with the the Lachine. The Lichine A's under Seb mm -hmm. I played with them for uh, one year, had a really good year. And then that's when uh, the ABC, uh, I guess, recruited me and uh, offered me a position in their program. And then I played with them for pretty sure three years and then uh, went on to uh, play for, for Crowder, Missouri. So I really started focusing just on baseball once I got uh with the abc so around 16 17 years old nice crowder college division one that's nice man i mean uh, what's the what's the recruiting process over there were they interested in you or did you submit your name in some kind of way it was it was uh it was a hard process uh um a little bit being from you know canada you get a little, a little bit less exposure obviously it's tough for uh you know to get your name out there a little bit but like i said abc does a great job and um So what happened was uh, Ray Calari really helped me during the process, really. Um, it was during a time where ABC was going a few was going through a few coaching changes and, and uh, you know, program director changes. So, you know, they were trying their best. Uh, all the coaches were really working hard for me. I have nothing but respect for all of them and, and all the uh, work they did for me on and off the field. Um, Ray Calari was really working and, and helping me. Uh, we had some... I know he's talked. He talked to Northeastern Oklahoma a little bit for me, but really, um, he contacted the coach at Crowder for me, uh, and he, you know, they're they're I guess friends and buddies from you know all the recruiting and scouting that Ray does. So uh, he contacted the coach at Crowder for me, uh, and then that coach contacted me, and then we talked a little bit, and and then that's how it really happened. So uh, um, I would I would say you know Ray Calari had a big impact on on my placement at Crowder. Nice. Could you make a very, very, very honest assessment of your game right now? So, so maybe three of your strengths or two, three of your weaknesses. I, I think I know what they are. I'll just let you uh, anal analyze that. Uh, so one, I'm, I'm a big leader. Uh, I like to, you know, being a catcher, I feel like you have to be, have to lead a lot and, and direct the game a little bit. So I feel like I'm a leader, not just on the field, but off the field and directing, Um, you know, directing the play, directing the game, turn on my teammates. Um, I'm very good defensively. Uh, I think I take pride in and my catching, uh, being able to, you know, call pitches, receive well, block, and then the last I think was is being a tough out almost. You know, working gap to gap. I'm not gonna be a guy who hits a lot of home runs, but I'm gonna work at bats and work my walks and get on first base and you know work gap to gap it and try to you know uh, hit the ball hard so those are three things that i would say would attribute my game that's very well said uh yesterday i i published a, an article about um well it was between a conversation between uh scott bradley from princeton and uh joe madden obviously from the cubs and the angels and and the rays and they were talking about something for the catchers which is the the knee on the ground and Tom Verducci, which is like the co-host of the podcast, told uh, told a story where 
a coach, a catching instructor on, on one of the major league team was told by the front office in no way, shape or form, even if there is a, a guy on third base or the, 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 the bases are loaded, ninth inning, in no way are you supposed to uh, not have your knee on the ground and you have to have your, uh, because they want to have the, 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 the low strike call. Yeah. I, I mean, I understand the process, but this is insane. And if you can maybe guide us through it or just have your thought, it would be interesting. I think I think in today's uh, world of baseball, it really comes to what you're most comfortable with. I know mm -hmm. a lot of guys who who do that new, uh, I guess, trend of going a knee down, whether it's your right knee down or your left knee down. Uh, I think it creates, you know, more room to work with with your glove, like you said, to work on the low pitches and stuff like that. Um, but I think it really comes down to a comfort level, what you're most comfortable in doing. If you're comfortable enough that you think you can block you know, balls in the dirt from a knee down, then, then do it. Um, I know for my comfort level, uh, I like to be on two feet. I just feel like I, I move better like that. I'm able to block better. I, I think I'm able to see the ball a little bit better. So that's how I work. Uh, I mean, there is times where I do go on a knee just, you know, sometimes to give my knees and hips a little, uh, maybe a pitch rest or something like that. There's a few times where I do it. Um, you know, it's just a trend where it's to kind of taking it over. I think you you can see that there's benefits from being on a knee down, obviously, with, with getting more low pitches and, uh, I guess, being able to be more mobile, like more mobile and getting those pitches down low. Um, so there's definitely a trend that I think more and more players will do that, more catchers will do that just because um, it's kind of what's, what's the new normal. Um, but if I was ever a coach, I think my biggest thing is whatever you're most comfortable doing, whatever is going to make you the best catcher. Uh, I'm not going to force someone to go on a knee down if he's more comfortable on two feet and he's going to be better for us. So, um, that's what, that's what are my thoughts about, um, that's very interesting. Being sorry, that's very interesting. And what I like is they, they seem over at Crowder to let you be you know what i mean so so just have your style so i, I i'm just very uh i i'm just happy that that, that they're letting the, they're letting you play the way you want yeah. and there's also the the calling of the game um do, do, do you have free reign to to just call what you want as, as to, to call the pitches for for your um uh, for pitches at, at school we're allowed to call our own pitches uh we have uh an earpiece from our coach he doesn't really call the pitches, but he would tell us certain things about a hitter who's coming up, you know. Uh, the biggest thing at school that he would say over over our earpiece would just be like, this guy likes to swing at first pitch, so you just want to be, be more careful. Or sometimes he'll give you suggestions on what pitch to throw in this situation type deal uh, is what he would kind of use the earpiece for. But usually we would have uh, – we would be allowed to call our, our own game at school. Uh, here with the Lake Monsters um, – our pitching coach right now is calling the pitches, which is, which I understand. I think he wants to be kind of more in control and, and uh, like I said, more in control of the game. And I think he might have a better understanding of the hitters. I personally like to call, to call games. I feel like you sometimes have a better understanding of the hitters or of the game of, of your pitcher uh, and what he's feeling type thing. So, you know, there's, pros and cons of both situations obviously and and you kind of live with the situation that is that is given to you i just want to re remind people that are listening you're 22 years old and you're way more mature than me man jesus christ the way the way you talk it's it's it, it's very interesting and you seem to know what you want which is i i just i i, I applaud you by the way you're, you. you're very very well coach um you are with the Lake Mons the Vermont Lakes Mon Monsters in the Futures League. Uh, the, uh, pretty much a concentration of all the best talent in the Northeast. Uh, what's it like? Do do you do you feel are you uh, maybe not afraid of that competition, or or is that more like a reality check in a way? Uh, I think it's a it's a great league. I know I've been in the league for the last three summers, so mm -hmm. I went there before I went to Crowder. Uh, after my freshman year and then after my sophomore year, which just happened now. And um, it's really, really been beneficial to my growth as a player. I know 
coming to the Futures League before going to Crowder really opened my eyes to what college baseball is really like and allowed me to grow as a player and understand that the game is played a little bit at a faster pace when you get to college. And you know, obviously the guys who are bigger and stronger than you. So it really opened my eyes to what, like I said, college baseball was really about. Um, and I think it's a great league. I think, like you said, it's mostly based out of guys from the Northeast who, you know, they still come from schools all over the place, but it's still guys that are mostly, uh, you know, from Boston area, a uh, few guys from Vermont, a few guys from Rhode Island, all the kind of, you know, places up, up in the north so um and there's talent all over the place so the, the the league's full of talent um it's like i said it's a great league um you have good teams good players on every team and so it, it's very competitive I, i think your travel traveling time is the the, the most of all the teams because the, the way it's set up geographically you're the, the, the farther farther west is that it yeah so we're the All the teams are based out of kind of Boston, Massachusetts area. Mm -hmm. And obviously we're a little bit off in Vermont. So um, a lot of time, yeah, we have to travel. I mean, we do, people still come to us and we we still, you know, go to them type deal. Type deal. But, you know, we do definitely uh, travel the most. But when we do go on the road, we will play uh, either two games. Like we'll be on the road for two or three games. So it's not just a there and back type deal we like. They allow oh, us to go okay. on the road for, you know, we'll play, let's say, Tuesday, Wednesday against the same team, and then maybe Thursday, Friday against the same team, and then come home type deal, or go on the road for Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, then come home after. And the same thing when teams come and play us, they'll usually stay for a two-game homestand. They'll play us, let's say, on the Thursday, stay overnight, and then play us on the Friday, then go home. So that's that's how the league kind of works with us being a little bit further from everybody else. We have some homestands and a ways and a ways things too. I'm not sure people realize that the financial pressures just to know that the gas price are so high right now, there are incidences or consequences for, for teams like you. I mean, I mean, you're not victims obviously, but there are consequences to, to that. So the team has to shoulder that kind of yeah uh, upper cost anyway. Um, I wanted to talk about, um, okay, don't get me wrong, man. Uh, I love Major League Baseball. Uh, I'm 42. I've seen plenty of baseball. And I love Minor League Baseball, too. But my site right now is all about college baseball. I love, and you mentioned it two, uh, two times during the interview, the grind and the, the way to live, like uh, having a, a, a an open perspective, like on live, because baseball is a grind, man. I'll never know what you're day-to-day -day reality is and i would like to know but in a way it's kind of scary because the toll the the the, the toll it's it takes on your body on your mind uh when you uh, fail seven times out of ten you're considered a hero it's insane man so can you can you explain to me on your personal life or, or even <laughs> physical life uh, what kind of impact it has had the baseball in in uh, in general You know, like you said, it, it it's uh it's a grind, whether it's mentally or physically, you know, it's it's uh I I like it kind of not the right words, but it's definitely not easy, but it's a challenge that a lot of us like to uh, endure and go after. Um mm -hmm. whether it be, you know, physically, obviously being a catcher, you're you're you know, you're back there, you're working hard, obviously, and, and the different things you have to do, whether it's block a ball or, you know, you're consistently throwing the ball obviously you throw just as much as the pitchers do really so um you know the biggest thing physically is just um stretching and rehabbing properly so that you don't get too physically damaged i mean your body's going to be hurting and sore you know most of the time but uh if you rehab and work out and, and eat healthy and drink properly and, and hydrate i think your body will will re like like get sleep and and uh re-energize pretty easily if you if you take care of your body you know obviously the game of baseball is a lot of is a lot of mental too you know it it's it's not fair sometimes either you might hit a ball hard right at somebody and and you know that's it's just the game though so really mentally you gotta i like to really really focus on the process of things more than the result because if you really focus on results, then it's, you might get caught up in that too much. Then if you're 
focusing on the process of things and keep working, let's say on your swing and you're working on, you know, different, different stuff and you're working on that process, uh, results will always come after, you know, you keep your mind in the right place. And it's, and I like to think, you know, some, it's good if you let your mind think of other things too and come home and not really think about baseball, but I don't know, think, watch a movie and think about that and not really just always think about baseball and try to leave the baseball to the field, which is hard. It's definitely times where, mm -hmm. you know, I come home and, and really think about the game and, and let it kind of take over my mind, but it's always good to kind of have a reset. Um, to get back on the right track. So obviously it's, it's like I said, baseball is a, is a fun sport, but also um, it's a little messed up at the same point. Like you said, you fail 70% of the time and you're still considered really, really good. Um, so, but like I think baseball is one of the games, like I kind of say, I've been saying on the interview is, is a big lesson of life because you know you you might fail at something but at the end of the day you're going to get another opportunity um to go back at it again so you might fail but there's still chances that you succeed at the same time so um baseball like i said baseball is a great lesson of life to um even though you fail to keep going keep keep pushing to whatever you want in life and and if you focus on the process uh in life results will happen Amen to that, my friend. Uh, we're, we're close to the end, man, but I, I want to talk about something because I'm not even sure that I set up the the, the, the last question. I, I kind of mixed two things together. Um, it seems like when you, when you reach the, the higher echelon of, of, of the competition, obviously the major leagues, you lose the close-knit um, attitude that you should have. So so when you're amateur, when you're semi-pro, when you're uh, in in college, you 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 strive for something, and then it seems like money fucked things up. And, and I'm not know if if I'm I'm if it's if it's me saying that the wrong way, but how how are you living it in crowded college or even uh, even in amateur baseball? Uh, do, do do you like that kind of atmosphere and and how is it in Crowder? Do, do people support you very much? Uh, you know, I, I always say that Crowder was one of the best experiences uh, of my life. Just the oh. people you meet uh, that you never would have met if you never would have really played baseball or, or gone there. Uh, I've made some friends there. That were my teammates that that would be friends for the rest of my life. I know my mm. roommate, uh, my roommate and his family will be you know part of my life for the, you know for the rest of my life. Just the connection that we made, um, you know, especially in junior college. Um, there's not much to do when you're uh, in a small town, so you really just build connections and friendships with the teammates you have. And when you're at school, you basically uh, are with them most of the time. And so the friendships and connections and the memories that you make is, uh, is, is pretty amazing. And so I, I really, uh, advocate for people to go to college and especially play, you know, college baseball, because whether it be in junior college or in division one, two or three, whatever you play, you'll make friendships that will probably last, uh, you know, hopefully a long time. And so I think obviously, Yeah, I think it definitely changes when, when you get higher up and, and there's money involved because, you know, you try to provide for your family and, and obviously for yourself and your loved ones. So obviously that becomes a different mindset. But uh, for junior college and, and for my experience, uh, Crowder was, was amazing to me. Like I said, all the friendships, uh, relationships, um, memories that I've made throughout my years there will, will be with me forever. Very interesting. Just a few, uh, a few random things. You said somewhere. I, I think you'll, uh, you'll understand where. Um, people doing less always talk more. Talk about yeah. this, sir. Uh, I just think that uh, I'm a big believer in and uh, work in silence type deal where mm -hmm. it's um, you don't need to be putting out there on social media all your workouts and all your videos of this and that. I think you know work in silence and let your kind of game do the talking too is the big one that I go by. Um, with the people that, you know, that do less are people that are, you know, kind of 
talking talking bad about a person, but they're really just sitting on the couch, so um, not doing anything. So that's just kind of my mindset that uh, I like to work in silence, you know, get my stuff done, don't need to tell people what I'm doing, how I'm doing it, uh, and then let my progress throughout my work show. Nice. Uh, Travis Lalma was uh, recently inducted in the NGCAA uh, Hall of Fame. Uh, did did you did, did you work with him? Yes, Travis was uh, a big big impact on my life. You know, on on my playing career as well. He you know, uh, he's one of the, the most uh, knowledgeable and uh, I guess amazing coaches that I've had throughout my career. He uh, he's going to be tough on you, but at the end of the day, he's doing it for the best interests uh for us and and for the program obviously he wants to win and he's going to do anything that he can to win but at the end of the day it's more than just wins you know it's developing young men uh and like i said to this world to be able to be a father one day to be able to work one day type deal so he uh he definitely had a big impact on on my playing career Wow, that's well said. Tyler, uh, you... as, uh, just to finish, Tyler, as a special message for people in Quebec who speak in French. So it's going to be in French, guys, okay? Uh, so for people in Quebec in French, uh, people or, or players who don't know if they have what it takes right now to just make it as a pro or just live their dreams. Alors, Tyler, peux-tu, s'il te plaît, dire un message d'espoir à nos joueurs présentement qui ne savent pas si on vraiment ce qu'il faut pour pouvoir réussir dans le baseball professionnel ou même amateur. Continuez à travailler fort. Euh, continuez à rêver. Euh, le baseball, ce n'est pas un sport facile, mais ça prend euh, beaucoup mon mental de, de performer, de, de pratiquer. Alors, vas-y dans le gym, vas-y au field, pratiquez. Continuez à pratiquer. C'est un, un sport qu'il qu faut pratiquer plus pour améliorer. Alors, continuez, continuez à, à rêver de... de de penser que tu peux faire ça. Un, si tu peux penser que tu veux faire ça, ça va arriver. C'est un, 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 un message que moi, je pense à moi-même. Si moi, je le pense à le faire, je vais le faire. So, continuez à, à, à rêver de, de travailler fort, puis les résultats vont, vont poursuivre. You, again, man, you're very, very mature, and I'm not just saying that. I'm, I'm impressed by, by your, by, by the way you speak. You're very, um, confident in your abilities or where you're going, and it's, it's very rare, rare, to, to see that in young people. So congratulations, and thank, thank you, you for taking the time to speak to me, this little guy from Quebec, just trying to talk about baseball. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate. You're that. welcome. Thank you for having me. It has been a pleasure. My pleasure.